Cool. The last thing we got to relate this to is what we call polarity. We already talked about bond polarity. And when you have a difference in electronegativity, we say a bond is polar. So let's go back here for a sec. We'll switch colors. Carbon and oxygen. Is that a polar bond? Is one of these atoms more electronegative than the other one? Yes, no. Actually, it is a lot. So it turns out that just about if, if two atoms are identical, then we consider that not a polar bond. That's a nonpolar covalent bond, or what we call a pure covalent bond. So, or if it's carbon and hydrogen. It turns out carbon and hydrogen are so close. Carbon's just a little more, but barely. And so most textbooks consider a carbon-hydrogen bond also to be nonpolar. But other than that, there are some other examples, but none you'll probably see. Other than that, any two atoms that are bonded together that are not the same atom is going to be described as a polar bond. So in this case, carbon and oxygen, that's a polar bond. They're not the same, and it's not C and H. Who's more electronegative, C or O? O. Oh. And so we can draw a bond dipole that points towards the oxygen. And in this case, there's another bond dipole that points towards this oxygen. And so two polar bonds here. How far apart do these point? Well, what's the angle around? What is the bond angle here in this structure? 180 is linear, right? Two domains, it's linear, it's 180. So you've got to keep in mind what you learned about molecular geometry now. It's linear, it's 180. And so if I've got one oxygen, so to speak, pulling this way, and one oxygen pulling this way, and they're pulling equally, who wins? To tie. And we say that their bond dipole vectors cancel in this case. They're not really pulling like in a tug of war, but there's a bond dipole here and a bond dipole here. But if they're equal and in opposite directions, they cancel if we're adding them as vectors, like in calculus or physics. So, and when, they, when the bond dipole vectors cancel, even though that bond is polar and that bond is polar, the entire molecule as a whole is nonpolar. And so now, you can't just know when a bond is polar. You actually got to be able to tell, based on geometries, if the entire molecule is polar or not. So in this case, do I have any polar bonds in this molecule? Yeah. Is the CH bond polar? Good. That's the one example where two different elements, that's still considered nonpolar between C and H, usually. So but between C and N, is that a polar bond? Yeah. Nitrogen's more electronegative. And so I look, that's really the only polar bond. And so the molecular dipole really follows the same trend. And so we'd say that the right-hand side of this molecule, the nitrogen side, is more partially negative. The other side of the molecule is more partially positive. And so this molecule has a positive side and a negative side, which is what makes it have an overall dipole, and we call it polar. So this guy's polar. Let's go over to BH3. So BH3, any polar bonds here? Yeah. Who's, actually, you may not know this. Who's more electronegative, boron or hydrogen? Hydrogen just barely. Hydrogen just barely. So, and technically, this might be one of those other exceptions that some books don't consider polar, but I'm going to ignore that. And so here, we've got a bond, bond dipole pointing that way, one pointing that way, and one pointing that way. And the question is, do they cancel? Well, how far apart are they? What's the, the molecular geometry? 120 trigonal planar. So if you pull this way, and pull this way, and pull equally towards the direction of my legs, would I go anywhere? No, they cancel. This one points to the left as much as this one points to the right. Notice it's really 120. It's, Lewis doesn't do a good job of getting the angles right, so you might have to take into account what you really know. But end of the day, they cancel, and this guy is nonpolar. So if we look at ozone, in ozone, you know what? I'm going to skip ozone. We'll come back to him later. So it turns out ozone, uh, ozone's going to end up being polar. It's a little bit on the funky side. And for ozone, and only ozone from the examples we've gone through, you have to take into account his formal charges. And if you look at his formal charges, if you look at the average structure, and you really probably should take into account his average structure. 
and his average structure. Well, if you look at the formal charges here, you've got, I, sh I missed some lone pairs on this guy. But if you look at formal charges, here he's plus one, here he's minus one. Here he's plus one, and here he's minus one. And so what you find out is this guy's positive here, partially negative here, partially negative here. Well, your bond dipoles are always going from, you know, towards the more electronegative atom because it's more negative. Well, I don't even have to look at electronegativity here because I see the charges already. It's more negative going that way and more negative going that way. Do they cancel? Well, are they 180 to cancel in this case? No, it's bent. They're not 180. And so they don't cancel, and this thing really is overall polar. This side of the molecule is more negative. This side's more positive. The same atom on both sides? Two of the same. Well, they are the same, but notice if you pull equally like this, I won't go anywhere. If you pull equally like this, I'm going to go up. And so it's only if they cancel direction-wise as well. Notice in CO2, again, it was linear. They were 180 apart, and they canceled. But in this case, it's bent, and they don't perfectly cancel. Overall, this molecule, the average of these two is not zero. It's going to be straight down. OK. Methane, no polar bonds in here. Overall, he just ends up being nonpolar. Life is good. Here, any polar bonds in this molecule? Yeah. Who's more electronegative, hydrogen or nitrogen? Nitrogen. So in this case, we'll draw bond dipoles pointing towards the nitrogen. So going up towards the apex of the pyramid, will they all cancel? Not in this case. If they're all going towards the apex of a pyramid, think of this as like the tripod over there. The nitrogen is where the camera is. And the hydrogens are all pointing up towards the top of the tripod. They don't cancel. Nobody's pointing down to cancel them out. So they all point up in some way, shape, or form. And so in this case, he ends up being polar. What about water? And you've got to be careful here. Because again, is this angle really 180? No. If you look at it from this structure, you might forget that Lewis doesn't always get the angles right. And be like, oh, it looks like they cancel. But if we take into account the real molecular geometry here, they definitely don't cancel. The average of these points straight up, and water is highly, highly polar. Cool. If you notice, a lot of people memorize, like, oh, if the central atom's got lone pairs, it's going to end up being polar. And for every example we've done so far, that would work. But it's not completely true. So, because if you look at, like, say, this guy, he's got lone pairs, but how far apart do these fluorines point? Based on what we know about the molecular geometry. It's linear, so these must point 180 degrees apart. And if they're 180 apart, they cancel. And so even with lone pairs, it's not normal. It's not, I shouldn't say it's not normal, but it's not usual. This guy ends up being nonpolar. So most of the time, the examples that have lone pairs on the central atom will end up being polar, but not all the time. So don't use, a, use it as a blanket rule. Same thing if like you see this one here. We said this was square planar. These fluorines are on the four corners of a square. You got polar bonds in all four cases, but if they're going to the four corners of a square, they're all 90 degrees apart and they all cancel. He cancels him and he cancels him. And he ends up being nonpolar as well, another one of the exceptions to central atoms having lone pairs. Cool. So if you work the rest of these out, kind of let you do these on your own, but this one, these all cancel in the octahedral shape and he'll end up being nonpolar. So this one here, again, T-shaped, well, if it's perfect T, then this guy cancels this guy, because bromine's more electronegative. But there's nobody to cancel him out at all. And so this guy ends up being polar. So if we look at SF4, and again, you've got to keep in mind that this thing is seesaw, and what that means.
Well, if you go to the typical seesaw shape, you might have one pointing straight up, canceling out one that points straight down. But then you have, let's say this is where the lone pair is, right here. You got one going this way, and 120 degrees away, you have one going that way. This canceled this one, but do these two cancel perfectly? No. And as a result, SF4 ends up being polar. There's not a real good way to, you know, get good at this besides just doing a bunch of examples. So you really want to work through a number of these, deciding if molecules overall are polar or nonpolar. Cool, I want to give you one more example, and it's the tricky one. And again, if you happen to be a Padres fan and in a bad mood when you write the exam, then you might give this one. How many of the bonds in this molecule are polar? Two of them. Which ones? CCL. CCL. Who's more electronegative? Um, CCL. Chlorine is sweet. Bond dipole there. Bond dipole there. Polar or nonpolar? Again, careful. You can't just look at what Lewis says. You've got to keep, take into account molecular geometry. How many electron domains? Four. What's the angles when the, or what's the electron domain geometry when there's four electron domains? Yeah, tetrahedral 109.5. And so Lewis again makes everything look either 90, you know, right here, or 180, like here. But again, three dimensionality here, those chlorines are not 180 apart, they're really 109.5. And if they're really 109.5, are they canceling perfectly? Not at all. And this molecule is going to be polar. This is the tricky example with polarity. They love this, and they love drawing it for you just like this, because technically I could have put the chlorines here and the hydrogens here, and then you would not have made the same mistake and said, oh, you'd be like, it totally looks polar. But like this, Lewis made these look 180, and they're not really 180. They're 109.5. This guy's polar. They don't cancel.